Transferring a pension can be a complex process, but it can also be a phenomenally helpful thing to do. The Pensions Policy Institute estimates that around two thirds of UK adults have more than one pension. Now this can sometimes be justified, which I'll come on to, but generally there are very few reasons to have more than one or two pensions. The average person in the UK will have 11 jobs in their lifetime. And with the introduction of auto-enrolment in 2012, that probably means 11 pensions. That also means 11 headaches, 11 different valuations, 11 different investment strategies, 11 sets of fees, and a serious amount of disorganized confusion. With each job change though, transferring your old workplace scheme into a new one should be a simple process. If you want to maximize choice or have professional help with your pension, you could also establish a self-invested personal pension or SIP alongside your current workplace scheme to transfer all of your old pensions into. If you go down this route, most schemes will allow you to carry out an annual transfer of any new contributions from your current workplace scheme to your SIP so that they can also be managed by a professional. Why then would you ever need more than one or two? Well, there are a number of things that you should be aware of before transferring your pension, and even a few reasons why it might be better to just leave it right where it is. In April 2006, a significant number of pension rules came into effect. Now, these changes introduced a standard tax-free cash lump sum of 25% and, at the time, the lifetime allowance, as well as removing a requirement to use an annuity. These rules were not applied retrospectively to schemes though, so whilst the changes brought about a number of simplifications from April 2006 onwards, any pension scheme you want to transfer that was established prior to this date will likely need careful assessment by a proper pension specialist. You could be entitled to things like an enhanced level of tax-free cash, some sort of attractive annuity rate could be attached to the scheme, or you could hold a with profits investment fund that has some kind of favorable guaranteed bonus rate. Some of the benefits simply can't be found anymore and they might be lost if you transfer the pension. And of course, whilst it's more common to find unusual protections or enhanced benefits attached to pre-2006 schemes, they do also occur in some later schemes too. So unless you are absolutely certain that you have none of these benefits in place, it really is always best to seek advice prior to consolidating your pensions. It's probably worth saying as well that there are some pensions that you simply are not allowed to transfer, like some defined benefit pensions or certain specialist pensions like the NHS scheme. In fact, if the transfer value offered to you on any DB scheme is in excess of £30,000, the law requires you to take advice on a possible transfer, and the advice might just simply be to leave it where it is. So assuming you are able to do it, why would you consolidate your pensions? Well, for me, the main reason to transfer your pension is to create a level of organization that Marie Kondo herself would be proud of. Personally, I want one mobile app that provides a simple overview of all of my money so it's not a complete headache to keep on top of. And that isn't just about aiming for a stress-free financial life. Organization will provide you with a greater chance of financial success. Your investments should ultimately be driving towards your needs and objectives. If you have multiple pots, it's pretty unlikely that the strategies within them are working towards your specific goals and priorities. And worse than that, you are probably invested in the various schemes generic default fund that may not be suitable for your personal needs. On top of this, many default funds are invested in a pretty similar way. So ironically, by having more pensions where your investments aren't being actively managed, your investments might actually be less diversified than they should be. Quite unbelievably as well, a significant number of workplace pensions do not provide flexible income withdrawals. This means that if you want to take income from your pension in retirement, a SIP is often the best choice. And if you'd like your funds professionally managed, it is perhaps your only viable option. Assuming you would like the manager you're working with to have the widest possible options available to them to manage your money across the broadest array of potential asset classes. If you do want to transfer your pension when transferring to a SIP, it's important to make sure that the new provider is registered with the Financial Conduct Authority, and if you are transferring to a stakeholder scheme, do also ensure it is properly registered with the UK's pension regulator. Doing this will ensure the pension plan is regulated and that your retirement savings are more effectively protected.
So to summarize, transferring a pension can provide access to a wider range of investment options, simplify the management of multiple pension plans, and potentially provide better investment outcomes. But it is important to carefully consider the potential risks and drawbacks before making any decisions. And do seek professional advice if you need it. So if you're ready to take control of your finances, maybe it's time to sort your pensions out. Because remember, your money really does matter.